Fallout Miami is an upcoming DLC-sized mod for PC players of Fallout 4. The project is being developed by a team formed exclusively for the project, and the mod itself will take place in Miami Beach, Florida, and is set on creating a new Fallout experience for fans of the franchise. So let's break down the development history of the project, details that have been confirmed during development, when players can expect this project to be finished, and so much more. As always, all the sources will be linked in the description below, so make sure to check those out and support those original writers. I will say sourcing each of the individual pieces of information from certain update videos could get confusing, so I'm just linking the entire playlist of update videos down below directly from the Fallout Miami team, which is where most of the information is sourced from. And with that out of the way, let's get into everything we know about Fallout Miami. Let's start with the history of the project and the inspiration. The community member that is credited with the first attempt at a Fallout Miami mod was the user Micah999. His personal work on the project started in late 2016, and after realizing that he had something substantial on his hands, he had started to work with the Fallout community to find other passionate members who were willing to help with the development of this project in hopes to expand the scope of this mod. The team states that by summer of 2018, the team was formed and had established a world and story that would fill this mod. And it was in April of 2018 that the team put together a teaser trailer for the project and put it out there for everyone to watch on YouTube. And from that moment on, the project was launched from a small fan project, which was set mostly within the Fallout community, to now the general gaming audience and community who were all watching this project and were intrigued by the color and concept promises for a Fallout Miami. And the trailer was left vague enough to let fans fill in the ideas themselves and what this content could entail. The trailer at the time of recording has been viewed over 1.6 million times on YouTube alone. Now, sometime after the release of this trailer, the original developer, Micah999, decided to leave the project due to personal reasons, and the development oversight shifted to new members of the team. As a side note, Micah did end up releasing an early version of Fallout Miami on Nexus mods, with areas that were scrapped and won't be in the final project. It also doesn't include any NPCs, enemies, or quests, so I will link that down below if anyone wants to download it and check it out. And then we can jump to July of 2018 when the official reveal trailer was shown off. It's important to state that this trailer was created to show off the vibe and idea that they were pitching this project on. The game was still too early in development and everything is subject to change. So a lot of what they were showing was put together specifically for this trailer and the project was still a far ways out. The trailer itself gives a look at the world, which introduces new enemies like the Gator Claws, it adds a lot of color from what we know in Fallout 3 and 4, and also gives a look at Vault 53 and teases a few bigger mysteries. And because up to this point the team had already stated they finished working on the story and most of the world building, we can hope that most of the promises they tease will actually be paid off because they did spend so much time concepting out the story. And this trailer did even better than the original with over 7 million views at the time of recording on YouTube alone. And for the most part, that's a good introduction for the project and will allow us to jump into some more depth while you guys can still now understand the background. So let's start with the teasers and hints the team has dropped for the story about Fallout Miami. Now the team states that the background for the story will start in the 2230s, with the Enclave sending a team to Miami Beach to recover a pre-war military installation. A secondary objective was to also ensure an Enclave presence in the area, and the mission itself was called Minerva 1, but the team went silent and was never heard from again. Fast forward 30 years later, and the Enclave sent another group to recon the area and figure out what happened to the original team. This new group was called Minerva 2. Now the only thing that second team was able to find was the leftover power armor but no bodies from the original team. Shortly after that, the Enclave base has been left to their own devices since the fall of Raven Rock, and the Enclave still maintain a presence in the Miami area. And these are the events that basically set the stage for the game, which will take place shortly after the events of Fallout 4 chronologically. 
The story will also be influenced by the fact that in this alternate history world of Fallout, the United States did liberate Cuba from Chinese influence, so there will be an area that has a museum commemorating this event, a monument outside the museum, and special power armor, and it all kind of leads into this world building and will impact the game itself. We also know as the story progresses, in our modern times, more Enclave will be dispatched to Miami from another Enclave base, and their presence will increase on the beach as we go on. We aren't sure how or why this will happen, but if you are a fan of the Enclave, know they will be very important in the project and will show up throughout it in increasing numbers. The team has also expanded a little bit further on the story when asked if the base game of Fallout 4 will impact the events of this story regarding factions they sided with in the base game, if what faction you sided with in Fallout 4 Vanilla will impact the events of this one. And the creative director for the project said on Reddit the story will be mostly standalone, so the base game will have very little impact on this project itself. They also have promised new factions which we will touch on next. And then a few other random story facts is the player still will be playing as the sole survivor, there will not be any other alternate player characters, and the team was also originally going to be reusing dialogue from the base game of Fallout 4 for our main character, but decided during development that instead they were going to shift to a silent protagonist to help the story flow better. So if you are only casually following this game's development, and you remember them mentioning they were going to reuse dialogue, that is no longer an option that's being explored by the team. So now let's talk about the factions that the team has confirmed for this new project. The first is the Enclave. The leader of the Enclave in Miami is Colonel Magnus. And the other important figure in the project for the Enclave is Captain Killian Beckett, both of whom are loyal to the Enclave cause, and the team itself will be showing off a few different types of power armor for the Enclave. One is a more traditional power armor with an updated design, and a newer Predator power armor which will be available to the player as we progress throughout the campaign. We will also see new vehicles for the Enclave, but with most Fallout games they will still not be accessible. And that's for the most part everything we know about the Enclave in this game. Another major faction in this project are the Slavers. As the name applies, they capture others in the area and sell them, and the leader of this faction is Gabriel Goodman. If you have been following the development process of this project, you might remember that Gabriel had been redesigned since the concept art phase to give him a more polished and classy look. Now this faction controls the Sunshine Hotel and Casino, also known as Sunshine Cove, and Gabriel is also a descendant of the original founder of the hotel and casino. The other members of the Slavers will have modified hotel worker uniforms, and most of them are also descendants of the original workers of the hotel. In the territory this group holds is an area that many members of Miami Beach want, so it's always kind of being fought over. Now the first smaller faction we can talk about are the Rovers, who are a pirate-themed minor faction. This faction is using Captain Squally's Bar and Grill as their headquarters, and their leader is Captain Billiam. But due to his young age, the other faction members are considering a potential mutiny of their young leader, and we will just have to wait to see what happens in this event and if the mutiny pays off. Another faction is the Nuclear Patriots. We don't know too much about this group. Their leader is Axel Slate, who has been a part of the group since he was a child and worked his way up the ranks, and their group has a biker theme, and the Fallout Miami team described as anarcho-libertarian, automobile fanatic, and road warriors who dispense their own brand of wasteland justice. And the team has said that the two main joinable factions will be the Nuclear Patriots and the Enclave. Another faction is the Tide Riders. They are a peaceful faction known for trading at the Driftwood Trade Post, and they live in a bungalow-type village. Their leader's name is Max Guru, and he washed up to Miami after surfing a massive wave and ended up becoming a ghoul and surviving. He takes in other tourists and they began to worship him when they realized he hasn't died yet due to his age and his longer life because he is a ghoul. 
And now let's talk about another major faction, the Cubanos. Their main leader is Emilio Segura, who is an older man with dated ideals and ruling style, and is often challenged by an up-and-comer in the group, Carlos Trueno, who has taken a de facto leadership role and has caused problems within the group trying to pit people against Segura. Now this faction controls a lot of land in Miami and they have a lot of influence and will definitely be one of the major players in this story. Another minor faction are the Dreamers. They wear Halloween animal masks for high ranking officials and are located in the old university. Different groups live in different fraternities and sororities which changes traits and how the group and their members act. The bunny mask represents Kappa Epsilon which are known for their hit and run style tactics. The wolf mask is known for Lambda Alpha, which are known more for trapping and ambushing their opponents. The tiger mask is Tau Alpha, which is the muscle of the group and focus on head-on combat. And the final sorority is Zeta Delta, who are the brains of the operation and are known as versatile scavengers. Another aspect of this faction is they are actually escaped slaves who are all addicted to the drug Luna which they are supplied to from the Cubanos, which will most likely play into the story and the different aspects between the groups themselves. And the final major faction is known as the Center. They are ruled by a group called the Center Council and a mayor who is Janet Anderson. She is seen as more of a traditional leader who doesn't want to risk expanding the convention center they are currently stationed at, even though they are currently facing overpopulation issues. Elections are happening soon in the center and she will be fighting to keep her position as mayor because another member of the center council is running against her. Now they are a self-sufficient society that trades and they have strong defenses to keep out the slavers and other potentially dangerous factions. The faction also has a police-like organization led by Clyde Anderson, who's actually Janet's son. He's loyal to his mother, and all the security has a vault tech influence. The team has also promised more surprises and twists as well as we progress throughout these factions and the story of Fallout Miami. They've also said there will be a faction reputation system, and as we progress through the story, the decisions players choose to make will impact faction reputation and can lead to different and unexpected outcomes. Now let's move on and quickly touch on some of the new weapons they have promised in this upcoming title, most of which are based on designs and ideas for each faction. So they've teased pirate swords, the version we have currently seen are only wooden, and they've said they are being used by the Tide Riders, which is a little bit more surprising than them being used by the Rovers considering their pirate theme, but that's okay. Another Tide Rider weapon is a spear, not too much to say about this, but this weapon does make sense for hunting fish and the hunting gathering type. The team has also teased a squirt gun, which has been modified to shoot an acidic substance that burns skin to the bone. We aren't sure which faction will wield the weapon, but it definitely matches the vibe of the world they are creating just based off the bright colors. The team's also been showing off this Uzi type weapon, which they have put a lot of work into creating. It has been teased in early gameplay videos, and the model itself was inspired by the Vietnam weapons of the 1970s and 80s, and I think that the artist completely nailed that design. And the weapon is called the Wild Goose. Moving on to one of the most anticipated weapons is the Liberator Shotgun, also known as a Quad Barrel Shotgun. The team has actually already released this weapon for fans to play around with in Fallout 4 before the release of this project. And on top of that, we also get a new suite of Enclave plasma weapons. Some of these new Enclave weapons will be a pistol, MG, sniper, flamer, scattergun, and a heavy, all of which look really good and have that bright green color and really nice attention to detail. And for the most part, that covers all of the weapons the team has teased up to this point. I don't doubt they have been hard at work on a ton more, but are just waiting for the final release to show everything off that they've been working on, like the new chainsaw, axe, and golf club. Now on top of weapons and factions, the team has also been hard at work on creating new areas filled with color and variety, and the team has described major areas as all having unique music, themes, aesthetic, and narrative. The main districts the team has teased already are the Meridian, which contains the pop and chill bottling factories, and the home of Miami's working class. Next is the Atlantic, which includes the resort hotels and a residential area. 
After that is the Maiman, which is the university campus and hospital. Bayshore is the luxury houses and golf course. Sheridan is dedicated to tourism. Downtown has all the businesses and civic buildings, and Flamingo is the retirement community. The team has also teased heavily the Pantono Royale Golf Club, which from the concept art looks to be a bright green swamp area that used to be a nice golf course but has since returned to the wilderness, partially due to the Cubanos using the area as a dumping ground for all sorts of waste, including that of toxic variety which has also made it one of the more dangerous areas in Miami, not only due to the wildlife, but also the human inhabitants that somehow find a way to survive in the area. Another store that we will be finding throughout our time in Fallout Miami is the Pop and Chill stands, which sell a refreshing citrus drink, and look like they have been scattered throughout the area, similar to the way Nuka Cola was in the base game. And the list goes on and on, the team has teased a school, a place called Gas Car, a firearm store, a place called the Napoleon Room, and of course the Cuban Liberation Museum, all of which will fill this world and provide places to explore throughout our journey in Miami. Next let's move on to the enemies, which is another area where the team has given a lot of what players can expect when this DLC launches. They did confirm on Reddit that Death Claws and Gator Claws will not appear in Miami and will instead be introducing a new type of enemy called the Snapjaw, which will come in different variations including the Alpha and Mythic versions which will be the strongest, but also two more rare versions that can be found in Miami which are the Glowing and Albino variations. In the same post, the team has teased the return of Super Mutants in a piece of art that was released as well from the Enclave, which said, Don't be a hero or you will be the meal. Report all mutant sightings to the Enclave officials. It's safe to say we will most likely see super mutants in this world. A radiation-infected parrot has also been teased, which ties in with the rover's pirate theme. And some of the other wildlife they've shown off is the radiation flamingo and gecko. The gecko itself will get more dangerous as it progresses in age, all the way up to the elder gecko. And when asked about gameplay difficulty on Reddit, the team responded and said they have a good variety of enemy types that will all be balanced out as they get closer to the later stages of development. Miami will be slightly less focused on combat, but will still feature many dungeons. Now, the team has also given us a few details about companion characters. One is Kelsey James, an electrical and computer engineer who's known for repairing and maintaining equipment and robots. The team also, as with most of these things, said there is more to her story if we decide to have her be our companion. Another companion that has been teased is said to be from Vault 53. We aren't given any more details and it could technically be Kelsey, but look forward to that. We will get to explore more vaults and some of our companions will be from these vaults as well. And the last companion they have shown off is Jimmy Hart, who's known as a rogue with a heart of gold. He is a recruit for the Nuclear Patriots and always manages to talk his way out of situations. And he can be found at various bars in Miami. Now I want to quickly touch on how this mod can be played. As I mentioned, this mod will only be released for PC players and does require all official DLC for it to work, so you will need Far Harbor and Nuka World, and they do not have any plans at this time to release a no DLC version of this mod. The team also said that Xbox players will not get this mod, but they will release smaller items as standalone mods for the Xbox like the quad barrel shotgun. And finally, when this comes out, it will be released on Nexus Mods and their own website. The team has said conversations were had about making a Steam page for Fallout Miami and have not ruled it out completely, but will make that decision closer to release. So what can players expect for the project in 2021 and beyond? Well, in 2019, the team said they were finally exiting pre-production and were getting heavier into the development of the project. We got the first gameplay alpha shown in July of 2019, but the project will still take time just due to the sheer size of the team and scope of the project. 
The creative director stated a few months ago that the project is still not completed and is not even close to being completed, and that the team is still working on it quite intensively. Which leads me to speculate that most likely a mid to late 2022 release, probably at the earliest, if they are just a few months ago saying they still have a ton to do, I would say they probably still need all of 2021 to develop and get this project really where fans want it. So 2022 is not out of the question and I think that kind of lined them up perfect for success. Just because they have to work on all these custom assets and characters, all of which take so much time to piece together. And not only that, but then all of the quality testing that's done to ensure the game and mod works as bug free as possible. Once again, I could be wrong and would like to be wrong in this case that we could potentially see the game in 2021, but I just don't see that as likely. Now the benefit is, as the team progresses further and further into development, we will get more details and gameplay, which is usually always more exciting to see things in practice than just concept art. Now I want to end by mentioning the team says they are always looking for new team members, so feel free to apply if you think you can help the process. And they've also stated and shown they are constantly listening to the community and taking fan ideas that people ask if they can implement. One of the ideas was adding the lifeguard protectron in the game, which they ended up doing, and now we have a 3D model for it. So if you have any ideas that you think would benefit this project, feel free to share it with the team and really follow them and participate with their social media. And for the most part, that is everything we know about Fallout Miami. There are still so many unanswered questions about the project and a lot of fun mysteries, but I think the team is rightfully not discussing them at the moment and are still trying to get fans excited for the final release. But that's where I'm going to end this video. Make sure to like and share, subscribe for weekly gaming news, and I will see you guys in the next one.